I have Scorpion chopping the shit out of me here, right? Look, chop, chop. We got him doing the back two, too. Okay, that's to that's uh for something very specific. Okay, we'll play that back in a second. Let's let's have him stand there. So uh, one of the things that you guys are trying to master and get down is the jab nooch, right? How to jab nooch? How to throw out jabs in the nooch, right? You see this shit where you're like, what the fuck? He fucking just jabs from over here and hits me. And it's because I understand fundamentals in neutral. I know where to put my buttons on the screen, right? If I throw out my jab, right, it covers this part of the screen. So I know where to space that and I know where his moves are. And a lot of you guys are trying to work on that. But you're like, man, I'm getting blown up. And the reason is because this is actually kind of hard, right? To get the jab, right? So we'll set him to the playback, right? He's going to do fucking back two. He's going to do the back two, okay? Playback, do the back two, right? To do that, I have to do this really, li really late. I have to do it like almost preemptively, right? You see, to catch him, I have to do it before the move comes out so that the move comes into my hands. That's something you guys, and I, I picked forward or back to a scorpion because it advances. So you guys are trying to time that, but that's actually harder, right? I have to do it pretty late, otherwise it trades because the jab is so short range. So in order to practice this and get good at it, what you wanna do is this, right? The down four, right? You catch him with that. You can space that easier, right? You can get that on a back dash shimmy, right? Let me do the back dash, come on, dude. Back dash, now well, tampon lanyard, right? But back dash, back dash, let me just back dash. Can I back, wow, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> let me set him to not just fucking mash that shit, okay? We're gonna do that, back dash, and then there, okay, there. Right? So when you want to stop someone advancing, you can use your down four, which I'm not spacing it, right? Oh, it's because that shit has a fucking disjointed hitbox, right? It's because that shit has a fucking sword, so. But you use the down four to stop them from advancing, because if you look, and this should be painfully obvious, down four has better range than standing one. Not by a lot, right? You look at how far his foot goes to like the second pole. Like if you look at the pole, in the background, it goes to the second, okay? Jab doesn't even go nearly as far. So the idea is you're using your jab to play the spacing game as, not necessarily as a whiff punish, but you're using it as your advancement. And that's the thing, is you're using it preemptively. I always say that the game revolves around walk forward, rock backwards, and jump. That's the fundamentals, that's it, right? Everything comes down to this. Well, when you look at the jab, you're like, okay, is this a walk forwards, backwards, or jump? Is this a, you know, he's just jabbing in the neutral. This is a walk forwards. This is a walk forwards, right? I'm walking forward to jab you. Because you see, if you look at my character as a rectangle, as his health box, right? His hurt box is a rectangle. What happens when I stick my hand out? A little piece of that rectangle extends forward. My hand is a part of my body, right? So I, my hand is moving forward. It's a little piece. That's why it's low risk, you know, kind of a thing. Because they got to time it right to hit this little tiny hand that's advancing forward. So that's that read. So in order to hit... In order to hit like the um, like the one one in the neutral, man, you have to think about it as an advancing thing. So what you want to do is fucking throw it out preemptively when you think they're going to advance in on you. It's the it's kind of like a pseudo whiff punish. When you think that they're going to advance on you, you throw it out, but you have to know the spacing from where it's going to hit. So if I use Scorpion, let's pick a different move, something with an actual fucking uh, jointed hitbox, right? So we'll do forward four two, right? This shit, okay? And I can jab this. I can backdash and interrupt this with a jab, right? Preemptively, I can stand back here and catch him. Well, I can do this, right? Hold on. Shimmy back, or shimmy forward three. Oh, I just gotta do it like straight away, huh? But like, you could do the standing two. With Scorpion, I think standing two is better. Standing two is better. Um, As far as using that, let me turn this off. Standing two with Scorpion specifically is better. It's got less startup frames, and that's better. So like another thing, right? Another thing, hold on, stop Scorpion. Another thing with the jab in the neutral is you don't actually want to use like your fastest jab. You actually want to use a slower one because the idea is you want their buttons to come out first. You want their button to come out first so you can get that sweet, juicy counter hit. And that's why moves like this are very, very good because of their slowness. Everybody says that forward three should be uh, uh, 10 frames. And I'm like, no, it should be 13. Because if it was 10 frames, it would be easier to bait that shit out. And um, 
and miss whiff punishes because it would come out faster when you're trying to catch buttons. So again, let's set Scorpion, right, to back to playback, right? You're just doing that. If this was faster, you see how my button comes out and I'm getting interrupted at that range, right? But if I back up, I can hit it and I can get the uh, crushing blow. Hold on, let me do it. You gotta back dash. To do it back dash, you gotta get the shimmy perfect. Also, practice shimmies as part of your execution, right? So don't input back dash forward three. Go back, back, forward three. Back, back, forward three, right? Back, back, forward three. You got to do that as one continuous motion. And to do that with the jabs, right? You just go, oh, hold up. Stop it. Hold on. Back, back, one, one, right? Use it just to like a micro dash, right? Back, back, one, one. Back, back, one, one. Oh, back, back, one, one. Oh, back, back, two, one. Hold on. Back, back, two, one. That one you actually don't want to do because it's so slow, right? You can force the whiff and then just go right into it because it's so slow it's like nine frames the slower ones just trust me on this the slower ones are better because they let their button come out first you want it to be a, ca uh, a counter hit and the reason why you want it to be a counter hit is because you want them to think that they can press right so when you're standing at that range and you're fishing for jab launchers in the neutral you want them to think that they can press you want them to think that they can get their button out and they'll go for something that's like long range advancing mid or whatever and you're going to interrupt them with a jab but you want to be right where they want to be and that's why spacing is so important and that's why i was saying that instead of working on the jab work on the down four and try to play the same uh concept right the same concept do that with down four. It doesn't give you a combo, but it has better range, so it gives you a longer chance to be wrong, right? It gives you a better opportunity to fuck it up. If your timing isn't perfect with the jab because you have to do it so late, by then it's already too late. Whereas with the down four, you're stopping them, and because down fours have, you know, they're longer attacks, they have longer range, longer startup. What is this? 11 frames, active for three. So we're looking at 14 frames. I control this space, right? So for all of this, for 14 frames, I control that whole area in front of me, right? And if, I, if it hits, I'm at plus 15. I can do whatever the fuck I want. That's a long time to control space, 14 frames, whereas you look at my jab, seven, right? And it's active for two. So that means I only control this space for nine frames. You see how substantially different the, uh, and even if you don't understand frame data, do you understand how substantially different those numbers are, 14 to nine? That's like a lot of time. And so that's what I'm saying is time is more important than like damage or whatever. As long as you know where you got to stand, right? I'm not going to fucking stand way the fuck out here and throw out down fours. He's just going to stab my feet, right? But if I'm over here, right, and I'm at the tip, let me turn off the playback, okay? If I'm at the tip and I know, right, I can throw this out. And then if he does anything from this range, if he does anything, he stands there and it whiffs, right? We set them to press buttons, hold on, and I can blow it up, right? That actually blows up fucking down fours from that range. So that one you'll want to do it down one just because his foot lifts up and it uh, low crushes. But what I'm saying is like you see how it's not necessarily how much space you control. It's how long. Jabs don't control space for very long, so your timing has to be on point. And if you're missing them, especially when you're fighting Wi-Fi motherfuckers, okay? If you're missing those jabs in the nooch, then start with the down fours, start with something that's more advancing that controls space, and don't be afraid to do standing fours. Standing fours are fucking godlike, right? Because you can just do this shit, bam. You can option select that. So I can stand here, right? I can stand a million miles away. I'm gonna stand way the fuck over here and option select that. And you see how I control, right? With my standing four, I control all this space. Think about it, unless he's approaching with like a down one, right? If he's approaching with a down one, he'll go under my down four. But if he approaches with anything else, I hit him and I option select into a fucking teleport. If I whiff, no big problem. Whatever. Teleport doesn't come out on a whiff. If it hits, teleport comes out, I can fucking blow him up, right? But I'm controlling that space. And if you look at standing four, standing four, 11 frame startup, active for two. So we're looking at 13 frames. 13 frames, I can control that space and option select for a full combo compared to 14 frames. So I'm losing one frame of time where I'm controlling the floor. 
but I also have a bigger reward. So start doing that. If you're having problems, just I recommend down four because it's safer. You won't get blown up, right? It's a low. This standing four is a high. It'll duck under. You'll get uppercuts because then if they start, if they make the read that you're going to start mashing standing fours, then they'll stand outside a standing four range, right? They'll stand there and they'll start throwing those. Start throwing those. Start waiting. Wait, hit confirm, throw it because standing four is only one hit. So as, as, once I see it whiff, I'm going to throw it out there. Be careful with that. But that's how you want to work buttons in the neutral, okay? You got to think about time and space. This is a fucking Mortal Kombat as a fifth dimensional game, asshole. Time. How much time does my move stay out there? Space. How far? What, what caught part of the screen can you not enter where my button is? And to figure out how much time, all you do is you take the startup and the active, right? Because they can't really, unless they get the counter hit, the startup frames are like a lie, right? They're a distraction. It's just the startup. He can't actually hit you, but you're not necessarily going to press unless it's something really, really slow, like an overhead, and you're trying to mash on it, or you're just fighting someone that's mashing anyways. But like startup frames, just consider that as part of the space control because as my leg is going out, you're not necessarily going to see that and go, hey, I'm going to push buttons. I mean, I really only control space for two frames. But if you add the startup to that and you think about that as one long chunk of time, right when I push down and four from the time I press the button until the leg extends and comes back I control this space this space is mine and you cannot stand here now granted there's some nuance and you can push buttons in between there right with the jab right so the down four I control this space with the jab I control this space Got to time it a little bit better. It's hard. Practice it with the down four. Then you'll start understanding the spacing at which you can do the down four. As you get better at mashing the down four to catch people in the neutral, then start challenging yourself with the standing one. Like, I don't really do the down four anymore. I just do down ones. You could go back and watch, or not down ones, standing ones. You go back and watch my matches, and like you'll see that I did down fours, down fours, down fours, left and right all day. Even now, I still do a lot of down fours. But if you look at my matches now, I really just kind of space it out and do the jab because I'm not worried anymore. The down four is when I'm worried you're going to like do something to blow up a jab. But now I'm making the read on the movement and I'm like, dude, if he's moving, he's not pressing and he's not blocking. Just do the fucking jab. If it's wrong, then whatever. Maybe they'll get it down too. If it's right, I get a combo. Hey, what's up, vampire in the sun? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Trash Talk Temple. Keep that in mind, guys. And if you fucking think that I have good tips, you can hang out with us on twitch.tv slash SoCalHoneyBadger. Uh, I do one-on-ones. We run a league. All kinds of shit. All kinds of Mortal Kombat shenanigans. And if you're already watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and fucking tweet out to your mom because she be fucking whiffing jabs in the nooch, man. I seen your mom do it.